All right, following up on the central limit theorem and sampling distributions from the previous video, I want to work uh, lesson for uh, demo for video two. Uh, and again, these, these um, videos, you work along with me and uh, submit them for a grade. They don't have a huge impact, uh, impact on, your, on your final grade, but you know, hey, if you need a Maybe you're, you're, you're hovering around a, you know, a 79, which would be a C plus, and you need uh, a couple of points, at least one point to get to 80, get a B minus, uh, the, the, you know, these things could make a difference. So uh, enough of that. And I will tell you, I'm going to miss something on purpose uh, just to let you know, just to give you an indication of uh, how you can um, uh, address your mistakes. All right. Um, Question number one, again, we're following up on um, the uh, central limit theorem. So assume the amounts of wait time that Mayo College students gain uh, during their freshman year are normally distributed uh, with a mean of 1.2 kilograms. I'm going to write this down. And a standard deviation of 4.9 uh, kilograms. All right. So complete parts A through C. So if one male college student is randomly selected, what is the probability that he gains between zero and three uh, kilograms during his freshman year? Okay, to work this, I need to go, uh, there's, there, there's not, I don't believe at least, I don't believe there's a direct link to uh, my stat lab here. Uh, I'm sorry, to uh, uh, stat crunch. So I'm going to have to get out of there. And um, uh, go to StackCrunch website and open StackCrunch. Let's uh, get rid of this one. I don't know what's going on with my blackboard. Uh, and now uh, uh, I need, uh, this is kind of laid out, kind of clumsy. So what I would do is go ahead uh, in, in these lessons and when you take your exam and so on, uh, go ahead and have a, um, uh, a tab open with Stack Crunch where we can go into the um, the um, uh, calculator. All right, so uh, between zero and three, uh, so it's just one, so we don't have to worry about the central limit theorem here. So come down and grab uh, normal. Let's make this a little larger for you. Uh, we need between, so we'll, we'll do that. Uh, so we need a, a mean of uh, 1.2. Uh, standard deviation of 4.9, and it looks like we need between 0 and 3. So 0 0.2401 uh, uh, would be the answer if we round to four places. Uh, it says four places, so let's do uh, 0 0.2401. Oh, it's incorrect. So why would that be incorrect? Uh, well, first of all, <laughs> what's incorrect about it is that when, <clears throat> when I went out and came back in with a new problem, the mean changed. Uh, that should be 1.3. And the standard deviation changed to 5.1. But we still want between 0 and 3. So uh, what happened there was just uh, kind of silly. That wasn't an intentional mistake. That was just be, me being a bozo, <clears throat> not understanding that the, um, uh, the parameters had changed. So uh, still 0, 3, so compute. So point uh, two, three, one, two. which should be corrected. All right. Uh, if four male college students are randomly selected, what is uh, find the probability that their mean weight? Now, this when I see mean weight and not just a gain for a particular person, then this is when the central limit theorem kicks in. Uh, so I have four. Now, can I even work this problem? Well, I see that uh, my population is normally distributed. So four, I only need a sample size of two or larger. As I explained in the previous video, so can you know I can work uh, this problem. Now the only thing that's going to change is I just need to divide the standard deviation 
by the square root of the sample size. And this, in this case, the square root of four is just two. So I just need to come over here and just divide by uh, two or the square root of four, all right? So compute uh, 0.4424. is the probability. <clears throat> Why can the normal model, uh, normal distribution be used uh, even though the sample size does not exceed 30? Well, since the uh, original population has a normal distribution, the distribution of sample means is for, for any, any sample size. So, uh, Well, hold on. Since the distribution is of sample means, not individuals, the distribution is normally distributed for any sample size. Um, and that's actually not the case. Since the original population has a normal distribution, the distribution of sample means is, okay, that's, uh, that's true. Since the distrib uh, distribution is of individuals, not sample means, that's not true. Uh, okay, so B looks like to be, some of those can be pretty tricky, you know, so you have to read them very, very carefully. Even with my background, uh, I have to read those carefully. All right, a water taxi carries passengers from harbor to uh, another. Uh, okay, that seems like an incomplete sentence, but uh, assume the weights are normally distributed, so I'm going to write this down, so... The uh, mu is 197, and the standard deviation is 40 pounds. Uh, the water taxi has a stated capacity of 25, so I'm going to assume that my N will be 25. And the water taxi was rated for a load limit uh, total of 37.50. Okay, this is going to be a little bit tricky. So given the water taxi was rated for 3750, what is the maximum weight per person? Uh, so, so all we need to do there is just take uh, uh, 3750 divided by the number of passengers, which would be 25. So the average weight and it has to be uh, 150. So really, doesn't have anything to do with stack crunch there. Just, just a little common sense, I guess. If the water taxi is filled with 25 randomly selected passengers, what is the probability that their mean weight exceeds the value from this? So, uh, so we need the value greater than uh, 150, which. Uh, uh, seems very likely considering the high mean. So let's, uh, um, what's the probability of their mean weight? Okay. So I need uh, a mean of 197. Uh, standard deviation of uh, 40 divided by the square root of 25. Oh, wait a minute, I need the standard. Uh, and I need greater than uh, 150. So one, uh, it's, it's gonna happen. This is round to four places, so let's make sure we don't get dinged on a, a technicality. Okay, if the weight assumptions were revised, so the new capacity became 20 passengers and the water fax taxi is filled with 20 randomly, uh, what is the probability that their mean weight exceeds 187, which is the maximum mean weight uh, that does not cause the total? Um, so I'm assuming, um, so we have the probability of, um, uh, 187.5. If they change the value on us of the sample size, so that needs to be 20 instead of 25. So 
Uh, is the new capacity of 20 passengers safe? Well, we have a 0.86 probability, uh, which is pretty high. So since the probability of overloading is over 50%, the new capacity uh, does not appear to be safe. I wouldn't want to get on this boat. So everybody has their own different standard. Uh, when women were finally allowed to become pilots of fighter jets, engineers needed to redesign the ejection seats because they had originally been designed for men only. Uh, the ejection seats were designed for men weighing from <clears throat> uh, 130 to 201. Uh, weights of women are now normally distributed with a mean of 160. And standard deviation of 42, complete parts three. Okay. If one woman is uh, randomly selected, find the probability that her weight is between 130 and 201. Well, I need between. So the weights are 160 with a standard deviation. Get rid of all that stuff. Uh, 42. And I'll need between uh, 130 and 201. So 0 0.5980. Okay, so if 34 different women are randomly selected, what is the probability that their mean weight uh, is between 130 and 201. Well, I just need to come in and uh, divide by the square root of 34. Uh, so point, uh, 0.999, well, it's going to be another 1, isn't it? So four places, so let's not get dinged on the technicality. So when re redesigning the ejection seat, which probability is more relevant? Uh, the probability, I think the probability for A is more relevant because uh, we we don't have uh, multiple women sitting in these seats. Uh, we have one woman at a time. So I would say part A is most relevant. Uh, uh, so I'm just really right now uh, concerned about these two answers. Uh, a is uh, more relevant because the seat performance for a sample pilot, now that doesn't make sense, for a single pilot would be more, again, kind of just injecting a little common sense there, more than what I would call statistical sense. All right. Uh, which of the following is not a commonly used practice? Uh, if the distribution of the sample means is normally distributed, and n is greater than or equal to 30, then the population is normally distributed. That's true. If the original population is normally distributed, then for any sample size n, the sample means will be normally distributed. Uh, that's true. The distribution of sample means get, gets closer to a normal distribution as the sample size gets larger. That is true. Um, and if the original population is not normally distributed and n is greater than 30, then the distribution of sample means can be approximately, um, wow, okay, that seems, that's right. Um, I don't understand this problem. <laughs> the distribution of means is normally distributed. Uh, and n, uh, I guess this is probably the technicality uh i don't know uh that that's a dumb question but anyway the reason i selected that one is that that's just a little deviation there if the distribution of sample means is normally distributed n doesn't have to be greater than 30. it and it says and n is greater uh than or equal to two uh then so that's just uh that's kind of a technicality but um hey i didn't make the question up all right uh, so we're done, All right? That's all I got. Take care.